Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing cellular injury. Now, if you guys haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because your support really means a lot to us. And with that being said, let's discuss cellular adaptations and then we'll continue on to discussing cellular injury. This is going to be a very short and sweet lecture, so just sit back and get ready. So, our cells in our body are constantly under a lot of stress because of the environment that they are in. And one example of this is the stomach lining, right? The stomach lining, the cells that make up the stomach lining are constantly being exposed to our stomach acids. And that stomach acid is very erosive. It's very dangerous, right? And our cells have adapted a way to be able to interact in that environment and to function properly. Well, that is at a cellular level. When it comes to our organs, generally in a normal person, our organs are in a state of homeostasis and that's very important because it's going to come back later. But remember, our organs are in a state of homeostasis. Now, because our cells are able to, you know, adapt to a certain level of stress, our organs are able to function properly in a certain range of stress. Once you exceed that stress, once a, such an amount of stress is placed upon an organ that exceeds the normal functioning level of stress an organ can, you know, handle, your organ has to go through some changes to be able to function properly. And these changes are based off of the type and severity, the type and severity of the stress placed upon the organ. Now, an increase in stress eventually will lead to the growth of an organ no matter what, right? So once you exceed that normal range that an organ can tolerate, you're going to have to increase the size of the organ. The two main types of growth adaptations you should be, you know, well versed in is hypertrophy and hyperplasia. We've discussed these in a previous video, so you can go check it out on our YouTube channel. And in this essential growth adaptation phase, your organ grows in size, right? So that is what happens when you have too much stress or, uh, you know, an increased amount of stress stress and an organ increases the size. So let's say you take away the stress then, you remove the stressor. Eventually the organ has to now decrease the size, right? Because we said earlier organs are in a state, a general state of homeostasis. So because you have increased the size but you got rid of the stressor, the organ does not need to be such a large size to be able to function properly. It's going to go through a process called atrophy to be able to shrink its size, right? And that's very important because atrophy allows for homeostasis of organ growth. Very, very important. We discussed the mechanisms of atrophy in a different video, and that video is available on our YouTube channel as well. So that is what's happening. If you remove the stressor, your body will go through atrophy of you know whatever organ that was under stress, and it'll go back to its normal state. Well, what if you don't remove the stress, right? If you don't remove the stress and hypertrophy and hyperplasia is not enough, one thing our organs can do is change the type of cells that they have within them in order to better adapt and better accommodate the stress that is being placed upon them. This type of cell change is called metaplasia. Again, we have its own video, uh, an, a different video on metaplasia, so you can check that out. And that's all happening during excessive or increased you know, uh, rate of stress and increased amount of stress that's being put on an organ that hypertrophy and hyperplasia cannot uh, solve. Now, if metaplasia consists for a while, if it stays for a while, that's very dangerous because constant metaplasia can lead to dysplasia and dysplasia can then lead to cancer and that is very important to understand when it comes to cellular adaptations. Now, that is what's happening when a cell is adapting. Now, that just because it's able to adapt doesn't mean it's not going to get damaged. Just because there's increased amounts of stress and our body has different mechanisms to manage that stress doesn't mean that the increased stress isn't injuring or damaging uh, the cells in the specific organ, right? And that's what's happening when we're talking about cellular injury. Cellular injury essentially occurs when the cell's stress exceeds the cell's ability to adapt. Like we said earlier, your cells and your organs have the ability to function in a normal uh, range of stress, right? So when you exceed the stress that the cell is under, uh, if you exceed it from its ability, you're definitely going to damage and injure the cell. And there are many different ranges of cellular injury. The extent of injury essentially depends on the type of cell, the type of stress, as well as the severity. So there are multiple factors that go into play when you're trying to determine what is happening or what the, the range of injury will be when it comes to cellular injury. Certain cells, like neurons, are actually very susceptible 
susceptible to stress because they go through hypoxia really quickly. They can't, uh, they're not able to tolerate stress. Their st stress tolerance is very little, right? So let's say their stress tolerance is like this much. That's the range that they can function normally in when it comes to stress. But there are other cells that are more resilient to stress like muscle cells, right? Our muscle cells are able to manage more stress than our brain. So definitely their stress, uh, like their range of stress management might be greater. When it comes to cellular injury and the causes, there are several causes of cellular injury, all of which you do have to have a good understanding of, and we're going to eventually touch up on. This is just an overview of cellular injury, and we're going to wrap this lecture up with the causes of cellular injury. So one example could be hypoxia. Another one is inflammation. Malnourishment can also cause cellular injury, as well as genetic mutations that don't allow cells to function properly that might tag them or that might cause people to have autoimmune immune disorders, right? That's a genetic mutation that can cause cellular injury as well as trauma. That is very important. A lot of people forget that trauma is still a form of cellular injury. So that's pretty much everything that you need to cover for cellular injury as far as an overview is concerned. We're definitely going to go into a deeper uh, dive into each of these causes and discuss why and how cellular injury occurs, but that's going to be for our upcoming lectures. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And while you're there, don't forget to leave a comment if you guys enjoy the content. Thank you again, and we'll see you real soon.